<laughs> Hello, Rust developers. How are you doing, guys? So I am here from the iCry itself. Here somebody is asking me some uh, permission for. What do you need? HDMI. Okay, I check on the cables downstairs. Down there. Okay. Maybe it's there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you know that the uh, things of the life that happens and here we are in the middle of the Fetch It competition. This is a competition that has been uh, created by Fetch It Robot and uh, the, the console is one of the sponsors. We have created the simulation and here we can see that all the participants, they are preparing their uh, robots. You can see one of the Fetch robots on the back there and uh, there are more here in the arena, so let me show you. Here there are two arenas. I'm going to show you a little bit there. And the teams, they are discussing, testing, and uh, trying to make the robots perform the Fetch It competition. And let me show you a little bit more about this. So if we come in this direction here, you can see one of the Fetch It robots here. Well, actually, there are two, and some of the pieces that are there they have to grab them and then put on some trays that you can see here and then you also use a machine that is over there on the back you see you can see over there on the back and uh, well that's quite a complicated here is uh, one spontaneous guy that is appearing in our mission so yes so I don't know who could it be maybe somebody from Power Robotics that is uh, yes and some people is saying hello Yes, uh, so for all the friends. Here we have a second arena of the team of, uh, of, of um, Georgia Tech that is also doing some tests. And the actual competition is about to start in, in a few minutes. So discussion, the lat latest uh, steps to be taken. Okay, so let's go because we have to start the live class. Let me go on this direction on the other side. So we are going to hear the spontaneous. Say hello to the audience. Bye bye. Hello. We don't have to more time for them. Sorry, guys. See you. And here we have another competition that it's uh, uh, created by DJI, and it's quite interesting. Where robots they are shooting balls to each other. It's a huge competition with big robots and a lot of participants. A lot of participants that they are uh, from basically from China. So let's go, let me show you more or less. So they are fighting there. Yeah, so you can see the robots fighting. And it's a little bit difficult to see, observe from here, but uh, it's okay, it's okay. So let's go, let's continue. Let's go to the place where we are going to do the live class. It's a little bit more quieter. Maybe you can tell me what about the sound, but uh, how you are uh, hearing everything. So, um, and let me, so give me some feedback in case that you see, do, you hear a lot of noise, okay? So uh, then let's move forward. So here is the area where all the participants of the uh, this competition of the robots uh, shooting to themselves, they are preparing, as you can see, it's a lot of people here. And let's go again. Uh, uh, to the place where we are going to take this information here. You can see some of the robots and the guys behind them that they are uh, trying to make them work. And let's continue. Let's go to the place we are about here. Uh, the conference, it's uh, very big. It's very large. It is uh, here. We can see some of pieces of robotic art. So here. Uh, and there, very strange uh, uh, pieces of art.
Okay, here we are back. We had some problems with the connection, and I think that uh, you can see it back. Yes, here it is. Okay, so let's continue. So uh, instead of going to that place, it looks like there is a bad connection. I'm going to move to another location, so you will have some chance also to watch other competitions like the Ducky Town, where there are some autonomous robots moving by themselves using very few sensors and in a wall of ducks. It's quite interesting idea and very, very funny, very funny idea. And here, so let me move to the other location where we can do the live class without so much noise. And I think it's going to be at the cafeteria then. That's my emergency room. And I hope that the noise is okay. So here it is, here I am. And let's see. Here you can see the, the coffee. Yes, of course. I have always uh, checked where is the closest cafeteria in order to be ready to have my coffee. But now the coffee will have to wait until we finish the live class. Okay, so let's go. Then, um, so let me check on the, please check on the, uh, on the chat if you are still receiving this. Are you there? The connection has been reestablished. The connection has been reestablished. Can you see the video feed? Please give me some feedback. Okay, okay, so you are there. Okay, great, great. Yes, great. Okay, guys, so then let's go to the class that we have today. What, what about, oh, so Jun Juan says no, Steve says okay. And uh, yes, uh, we see you, please, Jun Juan, check, check it. Well, Jun Juan cannot hear me, so Jun Juan, please reload. And let me check who is on the chat in the meantime. Okay, Jun Juan is back and uh, most of the people. So I can see here Dekopu that he was the one at the beginning. Then Linda Capito is asking if we, I will be at Micron. Yes, for the, the rest of the week. Actually, we are presenting a paper about using Rosjet for reproducing robotics experiments. It's going to be on Thursday in the afternoon. In case that you are around here, Linda, just uh, send me a message or through the email or whatever, come to the Fetch It competition and I, I will be there. And then Steve says, okay, no background noise. Let me know if there is much background noise here in this location. That's my emergency one, not so good in terms of noise. And then Code Hunter, Jun Juan, uh, hello, all of you. Then uh, Diego Martin here. Uh, Jun Juan, Marco T, hello, and Ash Hit C, and uh, CS 2R. Okay, so those names are very difficult for me. <laughs> Quarantine, hello, and uh, Lucas, uh, and I see many others there, many spectators. Uh, very good, and we got our first dislike. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, we uh, we also like this because. I mean, we cannot always have uh, likes and dislikes. They, those are the ones that push us to improve, you know. So uh, thank you all of you for being there. And then let's start. Uh, some people still arriving, like Carol, hello, hello Abdur, and Cool Deep. Uh, and so get uh, see revert also. Get to the back of the of the class because we are about to start. What are we going to do today? Remember, on the previous live class, we learned how to configure. A robotic arm in order to be able to send them trajectories using move it in this live class we are going to actually send the trajectories so the robot can grasp an object so that's what we are going to do today yeah so uh, let me send you the ross yet as always uh, how are we going to do that so you have to work with me you have to reproduce the same results that i am showing you on the screen and how it's going to be because we are going to use the Rosjet. I'm going to copy the link of the Rosjet here on the chat. You are going to click on that link and then you are going to get receive the code, the simulation and the notebook for this live class. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's very simple. 
then it's going to appear on your browser. You don't have to install anything and just follow these steps. Okay, I did follow the steps on the on the video. Uh, let's go. And uh, first thing, let me share my screen. Let me know if the video it's uh, especially if it is okay or you have any problem. So I will try to cover or do something. Okay, so here I am sharing my screen. Yeah, I was testing everything. Then I am inside the ROS development studio and I'm going to check my ROS yet. And I'm afraid that it's going to be a little bit too much for the network, I don't know. Let's see. Okay, so here is the ROSIAC of this live class, how to pick an object. So I'm going to click on here in order to show you the... Wow, well, it's taking a while. Mm, I don't know how it's going to go, how it's going to work with the uh, execution, but I think that the, uh, here it's a little bit slow, the internet access. So I have here this Roget, and then I'm going to press share in order to share with you the link. Okay, so here it is, the link, copy, then let me go to the other screen of the, here. Here it is, the link of this live class. So live class number 58, here it is the code. There you have. So please click on the link. And then I see somebody else that says, Cool Deep is asking, can we get project data from last video? Yes, you can, please. Ask me about that uh, by the end of the class and then I will share that with you, no problem, to share, to reshare here. And, but it is your duty because I will not remember and uh, I cannot, I'm not going to share it now because it's going to confuse the people. So let's go. Yeah, you have to press on that link, and once you press that link, you will get a copy of this area of the ROS development studio. And then once you have it, when you have it, press on the more button or just on the image, and then you will see this screen here, and then press open project. Okay, so once you open project, you are going to get this screen. Here, I'm not doing it because I want to go faster, otherwise it's going to take me forever to, to load everything. Then it's uh, uh, going to appear this notebook here. These are the instructions for the live class or up to material to cover, but I think it's even simpler than in the previous live class. So don't worry, we are going to finish on time today. And in case that you close this window, by any chance, you can reopen it by going to Tools, then Jupyter Notebook, and then you are going to get here a list of the Jupyter Notebooks, and Ross Developers Life Class number 58, click there, and then you get the notebook back. Very easy, okay? So let me know on the chat, let me check first the chat if there is somebody having any problem of accessing the Rosject. Remember, you only have to open, click on the link, and then in case that you don't have an account, create quickly a free account, and that is going to work. For, so you don't need to pay anything for accessing this material. So no problems. I see no problems here on the, on the chat. Great. So let's go. Shall we go? Guys, yes. Okay, so in case that you have any doubt, remember, don't uh, stay lost during the live class. You can ask me the questions there on the chat. I will be keeping an eye on it and check it that for, for some, so from time to time, check it if there is any question and answering, okay? So Abdul says it's still loading, yes, okay. Yeah, so it, because too many people accessing at the same time, then there is a kind of a queue, but don't worry, it's going to open in one, two minutes at most. So uh, just uh, let me go forward, okay? So with the explanations. So, and in this case, we are going to make the arm to grasp the object on the table. 
and uh, well uh, the importance of this class is very is very easy to understand is because you, we need to make robots that are able to grasp things for us so grasping is the basic is a basic skill still in its infancy but thanks to move it it's also even simpler than before than it was before so we are going to use it today move it once we have configured everything for the robot that we already did on the previous live class we are not going to um, repeat that process in case that you missed it you can check the live class here i have put a link on the notebook so you can go straight to the previous live class and check the video and everything so um, then we, we are doing this as a Rosjet, you know, you can create your own Rosjets for your own projects, your own code, check those links to learn how to do it. But let's go for the, the situation of today. I mean, the, I mean the, the concept of today. Um, first, we need to launch this simulation. Okay, so this is the simulation that we are going to use, is the one that we used on the previous live class also. And for that, let's go to simulations on the menu and then from my workspace, then select the file that is called main launch under the gazebo, shadow gazebo directory. Okay, so how do we do that? Simulations from my workspace here. Simulations from my workspace plus, then you get a menu here and then on the drop down menu, look for shadow gazebo, then main dot launch. Press there and then press launch. Now it's going to launch this simulation. Here, the simulation, it's a starting on a new window and it's going to appear the one on the, on the window. Let me check if everyone is on the same page as I am here. Um, then Commander Cisco says, I don't get an option to open Rush yet. And uh, now that message has been deleted, so probably you got it, Commander Cisco. And nice to have you here again. And as always, I mean, as every Tuesday. And uh, let's see if it is uh, okay. Currently in the muscle, I have this simulation running. Great, great. So everybody almost on the same page. Yes, I can see for here that there is a larger delay between my explanation and what is shown on YouTube. Um, let's have some patient here let's have some patient okay so <laughs> sorry for this live class from here is that what happened so many many things on, on the live and then uh, sometimes things go this way uh, then uh, uh, then lucas says simulation could not be launched something went wrong please try again or contact us if the problem persists and also for carol um lucas and of the supported browsers that are Chrome or Firefox, maybe is that the thing? Then, then check if you are doing that. In case that not, uh, so here is very. Uh, in my case, you can see my screen. So here is the simulation running. In case that you don't still don't get the simulation running, um, let me check what could it be. Oh. It could be that you have selected the wrong file also. So when you go, you have to remember, you have to select from the shadow gazebo, from the shadow gazebo, you have to select the main dot launch. If you select main dot launch from another package, then it's not going to work. Okay. And then Carol says it's good, all good after third try. Christoph still could not be launched, something went wrong. Okay, that's very strange. And then the, uh, some other people is, is uh, indicating that after second try work. And Carol says, you can actually see my screen. And second try, okay. <laughs> so um, yeah, it looks like there is a problem. Uh, it disconnects a lot, okay. Yeah, so let me take a note on this. Okay, so I'm sorry for uh, getting those problems now. Makes no sense in my case. So it, it's not related about the case that I am here on the, uh, on the, at the ICRA and not at the, car, at the usual location. But, um, and people is not seeing my screen. Yeah, that's, pro that's 
okay, that's the Wi-Fi connection the, where I am. Yes, but not uh, not in case that you cannot see your own simulation, then it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense uh, that I mean it's not related to the Wi-Fi because you, you are connecting to another other computers there. And uh, then uh, Danny says, uh, Gloria just arrived. Very good, Gloria. Quickly uh, get the project and uh, launch the simulation. Then. Uh, also, Abdul says how to have the layout as yours, which button to press, and uh, yeah, you got it. Okay, okay. So let's continue on this. Uh, so I have uh, th this is the simulation that just appeared to me. Yeah. So that's the basic thing that we have. Uh, on the previous live class, what we did is to create a movie package for. It, uh, allowing us to send movie commands to the robot, to the robot arm. So we can simplify the way that we are moving the, our robot. For example, we can tell the end effector where to go instead of taking care of all of the joints that we, the robot has. So that's a simplification that Movit is doing for us. And how does it work? Well, the Movit provides what is called the move group node. This is a ROS node that you can see here that allows us to communicate with the robot controllers, with the sensors, everything, and plan, plan joint uh, trajectories for our robot. And this can be done in different ways. Some ways are here, indicated here. For example, you can do it from a C++ program using the Movit move group interface or using Python programs, using the movie commander. This is the one that we are going to use here today. And then we also uh, can do it using our base plugin, using the GUI as we did last week. So we use actually use this one, but it's more graphical. It's more interesting from a program, okay? Because you want to create programs for your robots control. Okay, so uh, that's a move group and the move group provides, uh, well, the movie provides the movie commander as a class that allow our programs, our Python programs, to communicate with the move group. And that's what we are going to do here today. Okay, so how do we work here? How do, imagine that we have this robot in, in our warehouse, in our, in our robotics uh, place. So what do we do in order to be able to launch the move group? Well, we have to do what we did last week. That means to create the configure. So that's what we did last week. And now we are um, ready to just launch it. This is just for launching. And then once we launch this configuration, we will be able to send commands to the robot. Then I have provided here the command that we have to do in order to launch it, to launch the move group for this robot okay so how do we do that let's go to tools and open a new shell and then in this shell let's launch the uh, command that i have indicated here you can copy and paste okay it's it's very simple it's the package that we created last week and also the launch file one launch file that was created by the end of the notebook of the previous live, live class. So let's do it. Let's launch it. And then we should get some messages. And at some point in time, we should get, uh, you can start planning now. That means that everything has launched correctly. Even if there is a problem here with uh, those, don't make, don't pay attention to that. Uh, these are things that need to be corrected in the future live classes. But for now, it's not going to affect to our system. Okay, so if you get this uh, message, probably everything is correct, it's, it's okay. Let me check if you can reach that point on the chat. Okay, so let me see. Um, then then uh, Jun Juan says it works. Carol says that you have lost me. I'm sorry for that, uh, you are keep lo losing me. So uh, let me write on the chat. Let me know if you miss some of the instructions.
and Gloria is reporting she is good and on the rise yet great so please let me know now I'm waiting for you here okay so let me know if you it's gay so sorry I just got distracted here by the people and uh, then um, let me know if you are following the instructions and you reach that point of you can start playing now. Diego Martin is indicating we lose you from time to time, but it's all working okay in the ROS yet. Yes, yeah, so maybe you are losing my uh, instructions, my um, explanations, but uh, you can, in, in case that you get lost, you can use the ROS yet because it's already included there. Let me get closer to another place that could be easier in the meantime. Okay, start planning now. We have Mechatronica Maxima reporting that uh, he is this. And then Commander Cisco is also on track with me. Great, so let's continue. I'm just moving to a closer place to the Wi-Fi spot and and Jun Juan says, my Russia crashed. Okay, so I think that today is not a good day for <laughs> doing this live class. So if your Russia crashed, if you Russia crashed, then uh, launch it again. Jun Juan, sorry, cannot provide any more information about that. Oriol Ramos, we want to learn change the position with Python or CPP code with python code easier with the easiest way so uh, let's continue then let's create our python program okay so here in the movie commander and this is the the class that movie provides in order to send python commands to the arm to the actually to the move group node that will command the, the arm and uh, the type of commands that we can send is on four different types. First, we can send a complete post, um, a complete post that you would like the robot to, to adopt. If you remember the previous live class, we defined some poses. Those are poses that we know that we want our robot to acquire at some moment in time. So we can send a command to the move group and say, hey, please, robot, set yourself to this position. We are going to see how to do that, okay, in, in a minute. Then we can send a position for the end effector. So what does it mean? Remember that the end effector is the final point in which we want the robot to take some action. So we can send a command to the arm using the move it commander we can send a command that says, hey, put the end effector on this location. So we don't care about the joint for each joint of the, uh, of the arm. We don't care about which position it ha they have to take. It's very convenient because we can say, put this very close to the ball. And that's it. Th we are going to see how to do that in a minute. Then also you can specify the positions of each one of the joints. But we are not going to see that because it's very, for, for our case, it's, not, it's, it's a lot of work for, for nothing. So, and also you can specify a complete trajectory to follow in case that we know from another program better trajectories or from a neural network that provides uh, trajectories already, we can say to the movie, hey, please follow this trajectory exactly. We are not going to see this ne neither here today. For today, we are going to see only two simple ways. One, send a, a pose, and then send to a position of the end effector. With those two systems, we are going to be able to grasp the ball. Okay, so um, usually in a grasping sequence of any robot, of any robot, if you want a robot to grasp something, usually it has those five steps that you have to do with the robot. Five steps. The first one, you have to bring the arm to a known position and then open the gripper over there, usually. So you, you are going to bring the arm to a position that you know that is not going to collide with anything when it starts the movement of the grasping. Okay, so that is one of the positions that we are going to, to uh, send the robot to. 
then you have to bring the arm to the location of the object that we want to grasp but subtracting a certain amount of a space so we don't want the robot to go straight to the location where the robot is going to rasp the object why because it's very likely that is the, the arm is going to collide it's going to collide the current planners for robots they are not able to take into account very easily the, very carefully the object that is in there and then plan to very, very close. So it, this has to be done in two steps. The first one is to get close, but not close to touching the object yet. And then uh, we do a third movement, that is to move the arm closer to the object until the object is between its fingers. So it's a two steps movement to, to grasp the object. First one very close without touching, and then move the arm closer to the object. Then, fourth movement is to close the fingers and then finally do a lifting movement that it, it's actually taking the object and lifting from the surface that it is uh, staying there. Okay, so that's all the steps that we are going to do today here. Let me check if everything is okay on the, on the, on the chat and here then quarantine the muscles, he says, I am ready. And I hope that all of you are ready also. And let's continue then. Uh, for that, we need to create a package that we are going to call my grasping. And then inside it, you are going to create a Python code that is going to be called grasp demo. So let's go, let's go guys. Um, how do we do that? First, let's open another shell on the tools, go to tools, then shell. Do you have it here? And then we go here to, you, in order to create this package, we have to go to the Catkin workspace. So go CD uh, Catkin workspace slash SRC, get in. And then here, remember the command is catkin underscore create underscore pkg and it's getting a little bit uh, slow here yes uh, as this connection is not very good and then, then abdur says is asking a question in the meantime uh, should we use perception and automap to avoid collision with the environment automatically uh, yes you should but we are not going to do this today it's too much this is too much for today and then uh, today we are going to go straight to the object because we know where we where it is so it's cat king three package space then the name that is my grasping space uh, ross pi okay so remember to include the ross pi by the end that indicates that the, uh, this is going to be code that depends on ross pi yes let me create the package so we have created a package if i do an ls i'm going to see uh, uh, my grasping yes there okay so let's go to my grasping my grasping underscore grasping yes and then here inside the it's getting very slow here with this wi-fi connection so we have the source then inside the source okay instead of using this let's use the ide so we are going to create a file inside the source. So let's go to tools, then IDE, select the IDE. Then let's go here to Catkin, inside source, inside my, inside my grasping, and then inside source, do a right click and create a new file. This new file is going to be called grasp underscore demo. Grasp 
underscore demo dot pi okay and here you can write the code that is here on the first cell this is the initialization of the uh, move it commander so let's copy here and let's add into the grasp demo and let me make this bigger so you can see the code okay so so far so good let me check so how are you doing are you following let me know if you are following then uh, I'm going to keep um, explaining how to do how to use this okay so what does it mean this code well the, apart from importing the things that we need to use raspi the move it commander and one message the geometry message then what we are doing is initializing the move it commander so move it commander it's initialized like this okay so this is the system the movie commander is the system that is going to allow us to send commands to the movie node okay so here we initialize the movie commander then we create the node for this is the node of our program is a ROS code so we need to create a node and then we get the robot the robot from the movie commander okay so we say hey movie commander which one is the robot that we are going to use so we get it. Then uh, what else? Um, then the first thing that we need to do is to send the arm to an initial known position. So if you remember on the previous live class, or, or if you don't remember, doesn't it's not important. We created a position that we call start. Then that position is a certain location for the for the joints of the robot. And what we are going to do here is to tell the robot, A, hey, go robot, go to this start position. So how do we do that? Copy this code that is in this cell, copy it here beneath the robot movie ro commander. So let me put it there. So what we are doing here first is saying, oh, okay, let's get from the movie commander let's get the group of joints that we call the arm remember that on the previous life class we configure the move it uh, uh, system and we define two types of groups one is the group of the arm that contains all the joints and then the second is the group of the gripper of the hand yeah do you remember that we created that if not, go and check the video. So now what we are saying is, hey, move it, commander. Use, let, we are going to use the group that is called the arm. Okay, so that's what we do. And then to this arm group, we set this to a name target that we call the start. This means, hey, arm group, you have to be set on that start position that we define on the configuration during the configuration of move it. So this is what we are setting as a goal. And then here we say, A, hey, now plan and execute. This go command means you have to plan and then you have to execute the plan that you find in order to, re to bring the robot to that start position. Okay, so it does both things. Uh, I'm telling you that because move it allows you the move it commander allows you to just to send to to different things so one is to plan to see if there is a plan and then another one is to execute in case that you find a plan that is uh, okay for you for your constraints whatever they are okay so in this case we are going to do it both things at the same time now in order to close properly the system we have to add those two lines here Raspi sleep and movie commander close shut down. Okay, the sleep is just to ensure that everything, any movement has been done, uh, has been finished. Uh, so is a very uh, hard way of doing it. And then movie commander is the shutting down properly. That's it. So that is 
uh, the code for setting the robot to the previous to the start position. So let me see if you are working on it correctly. And then Francisco says that uh, he is following, but a little bit behind. It's okay. And uh, Quarantine says disconnected, trying to reconnect. RZ says hi, Theos, checking in just in time. RZ, yeah, welcome. Welcome, get uh, to the back of the class and get the rush yet and start doing. Come on. And uh, people is getting these connections from the system. Okay. Mm. I am sorry for that. Then um, Kashish says, suppose there are objects kept randomly on the table and we do not know the position of an object with respect to the role. How can we find the position of an object? subject of the next life class so in the next life class uh, we are going to learn how to perceive the objects in a very simple way and get the position so now we are creating the program that is going to allow us to uh, grasp the object from a known position on the next life class we are going to learn how to add the perception so the robot will go to the proper location And I think that many people is getting this disconnection. And um, uh, can you do a check for me? Can you check if your CPU here is very uh, is very high? So your CPU and memory, especially if CPU and memory, CPU check the CPU and memory level of the ROSDS. What, which value, which value do they have? If they raise, if they rise to up to 90 something percent, especially memory, then you get out of memory and then you can have a problem. So the, the system can freeze. Okay, yes. If you have CPU 100% and RAMs 99%, then it's, the system is frozen. Yes, the system is frozen then. Okay, uh, guys, so given this situation, <laughs> then I cannot do anything else from here about that. And uh, then what I'm going to do, um, and then people cannot get logged into the ROS DS. Yeah, probably it's stuck. It's, it's frozen. Your account is frozen and we, we have to manually unfroze uh, the, the account. So that's a, a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So Diego says the problem seems to be the connection to the ROS DS. Yes, that is correct. If you have reached the 99% value of memory, then the system is uh, frozen. Yes, directly. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sorry about that. Um, then uh, let me do one thing. Let me keep moving into the life class just a straight and about uh, going a straight into this or to finish the the this life class and then what i will do is to try to make this in another way so we, you can repeat with a free account without reaching the 99 percent of the memory i don't know how i'm going to do this but I will have to study another way. So, um, yeah, let's do that. I cannot do anything right now, just in the middle of the live class. And I'm sorry if you got this frozen. Yeah, it's better if you try later the live class. So, sorry for that. Um, we still need to improve our system for free uh, users. Even if you get the 99%, it's not uh, a good point that the system uh, freeze, freezes, and so we'll have to include some checking system that prevent you from reaching the 99% of memory. Sorry about that, I cannot do more from now. So let me do this, let me continue with the live class, show you how it works, and then uh, figure out a solution so you can do this later on, later on your, by your own. Okay, so uh, let's continue with the live class. So once we have this uh, program, we can launch it and see the effect on the gazebo robot. 
So let me put it there, the, the simulation, and let me launch it, our program. So it's a ROS launch. My grasping, let me see, because I, I'm also getting problems with connections for, but the, in my case is the Wi-Fi here, because I'm transmitting and receiving at the same time the transmission in order to check that everything is correct. And also running this, uh, um, the ROS DS, so ROS launch, my grasping, and then my program, it's called the uh, grasp demo, grasp demo. Okay, so I have to provide the execution permissions, so CD source, uh, CH mode, plus X, then grasp demo okay ROS launch actually it's not ROS launch sorry it's ROS run my grasping grasp demo so now I have launched it and then it should move the robot here you should see on the simulation how the robot moves to the starting position and there it goes. It's moving, but the refresh rate for my connection is very slow. So I can see this um, very slow way. But anyway, we got the start position, okay? So the robot is there on the starting position. And then now what I'm going to do is to add the second thing, the second, well, it's actually 1B is this first step is to open the hand. So if you remember here, we created the group for the arm. Well, actually we recovered the move group for the arm. Now we are going to recover the move group for the hand that we call the gripper. Okay, so I'm going to copy this and I'm going to put it before, so after the, the arm movement, but before the sleep. Okay, because I want to do all my movements here in the sequence before the sleep, of course. So what I'm getting now here is the group, the move group for the gripper. And then I'm going to send another position to this gripper. That is the position of open. Okay, so open the gripper. That's the position that we define. If you remember, we define an open and a closed position for the gripper. So there it is. Then let me go back to the simulation and launch the program again then we should see here how the gripper opens. Let me put a better position so we can see. I don't know, oh, oh, maybe here, yeah. And let me launch it, it, launch it again. So actually it's doing all the tasks. This is doing, yeah, and now you can see that the gripper has been open, yeah. Okay, so we have the second position done then uh, the, well the first position sorry everything is the starting position and the opening the grasping element now bring the arm close to the object okay so this is we are going to use a second method for setting a uh, look a, um, a position of the arm at a given location so how do we do that well we do it by creating a pose message a ROS pose message that contains the orientation and position that we want of the end effector. So that's the, the end effector is the uh, where the gripper is. And this position and orientation has to be provided in the wall frame. Okay, so that's a second type of command that we can send to the move group. Then let me put it here on the code again so i'm going to copy everything copy everything and put it after the code that they have added for the gripper here then i create the pose i fill the pose with the proper orientation and position that i know because i know beforehand okay so this is the position close to the ball it's close to the ball but a little bit higher okay so i cannot touch it yet a little bit higher so I know this because I have measured before and I have put this orientation and position in wall coordinates. Then what I do is to call the arm group, the arm group again, and I say set post target. 
set post target and I provide this post message. So, and then finally I say plan and execute, that's it. So instead of providing um, here, as I provided here, set name target, here I am providing set post target. Yes, and then go. Okay, so let's execute that and see what happens. So actually the robot has to move closer to the ball. So let me execute it again and see what is the result. So it's actually doing everything before, but we cannot see because the robot is on the same position. So okay, not solution not found. Okay. What, what it says. Okay, the, 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 there was a problem in the execution. No, but it actually executed properly. So I don't understand why it does it says this aborted. Okay, so I don't understand that. I, what it refers, we should see what it's uh, referring to, to which one of the three ones. But in any case, everything has been executed properly. So we can see that the robot is on top of the ball, just a few centimeters on top, that is not able to grasp yet. Let me see if there is any question on the chat or something that cannot. And then, um, and then the, le, here there are some questions. And, um, Jun Juan, I will try after the live class, okay? Can, uh, Mechatronica Maxima, can you explain quickly the code I was copying, please? So already explained. Hope that it's okay. If you need more explanation, let me know. Then Diego says, Diego Martin, Ricardo, I should be, a, should be a way to manually stop the current open ROS yet. Yes, that is right. That's a problem in our side that we have to improve into the ROS DS. I promise to have this solved for the next live class. So we are going to put some effort, extra effort on solving this. So this doesn't happen anymore. In case that you get uh, uh, stuck, you can recover it yourself. I'm sorry, you cannot do it right now. I'm sorry. Then Commander Cisco, yeah, yeah we would appreciate you recreating this class. I'm mostly seeing your logo now instead of the movements of the robot. Oh, okay. Okay, that's also very good point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the live class right now. And then afterwards, this afternoon, I'm going to redo the whole class and with a better sound, with a, a proper connection. And then I will put the video, the whole video in one shot. Okay, so you can follow. I hope that this is uh, enough for, for you. And I apologize for all the problems. I thought that could be a good idea to you be here at the ICRA and do this. But I, now I can see that it's not so uh, such a good idea. That's a common problem in all the conferences that the Wi-Fi, you cannot rely on those. Um, OK, so uh, now we have the robot that is closed. And now we have to get the hand closer that's the third step is to put the arm very very so put the object in the middle between the fingers of your arm remember that this strategy that we are explaining here it should be applied to any to any robot not this type of robot but any robot that is trying to do a grasp so let me write here the code that is setting a target position for closer to the object then in this case check this out because what i'm doing is modifying only the z of the message that i have created on the previous step so i am getting all the other parameters the same way except the z that is the height the height sorry the height of the of the arm and then I set that pose again. I, I do the same thing, just modify the Z and I send it. So let's have a look here how it works. Let me launch it again. So in this case, yeah, the robot has moved to the prior initial position, open it, and now it's moving into the closer, into the robot. And now it's getting very, very close to the object. You can see that the it's it's very close with the robot with the ball between the fingers. Yes. 
Now, final movement that we need to do is to close the fingers. Not the final, sorry, there is another one also. But now we have to close the finger, so let's close the finger. And for this, what are we going to do? Well, just set another position for the gripper. You remember that we created one specific position open for the gripper and another close for the gripper here. So we are just planning the, the hand to close. Right? So let me launch it, show here the simulation and here launch it again. Now we should see the robot going to the starting position. Go to the starting position, then opening, then going closer, close to the object, then getting closer, and then closing the gripper. Okay, so this movement is something is strange. <laughs> it's very strange movement. Okay, so uh, something strange happened there. I think that it collided against the table. That is possible, that happens. And I cannot stop here, the, the controller. Okay, so um, I'm trying to stop this controller, but I, I'm not getting access to the terminal from this uh, so uh, guys we are going to do one thing okay so I, I think that this is not working at all because I cannot work and also you cannot even work yourself not even that so okay so let me stop here the Okay, guys, so uh, I think that this is not working at all. So I'm going to close this. Uh, yeah, so completely close the system. So I hope that I have reduced a lot the amount of uh, network that you are getting, uh, that, that I am getting, that I am using here. So you can see me better as you can see me and you can hear me. I'm checking right now that the glass is still there showing and if I show myself, but I can see that there is a lot of delay. And uh, then what I'm going to do is, I'm, I'm sorry, but I have to close the, the class here. I will be happy if you have any questions. So before I close the, the live class, if you have any questions, you can put it there and I will be happy to answer them. But what I'm going to do right now is that, uh, so I'm going to close this live class I'm going to re-record this from a quiet location with Wi-Fi at the hotel and uh, record the whole class and send that to you. Well, uh, publish on the, on the YouTube channel so you can follow step by step and without any interruption and good quality of everything. I am sorry for that. I always try to, you know, to try new things and figure out better uh, things to provide you uh, with uh, new inputs, new ideas, and sometimes it doesn't work. So we have here two problems. Okay, two problems. Uh, the first one is that my internet connection is not very good here. Even if everything was tested yesterday, okay? So yesterday everything was tested, but you know, that's how things go. Then uh, this is the first problem. I'm going to solve this by uh, re-recording the live class tonight and publishing this tonight second problem that we have is that you reach the maximum memory and then your system was frozen and for that what i'm going to do is to uh, um, talk to my team and uh, we are going to devise a solution for preventing the system from happening that so before everything is reaching that amount of memory then some systems are, should be shut down and uh, prevented you from getting kick off of the system. So now I'm going to look for the questions in case that you have any questions, put it them on the chat and I'll be happy to answer. And uh, yeah.
that's it. So if there are no questions, then I will be I will close this system. Then uh, here's here some people. Uh, these uh, people that is uh, sending me uh, some messages on the chat uh, for support. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Uh, and then uh, let me see. Some people say send us the link to the previous live class. Yes. So that's a good point. I'm going to do it right now because I didn't remember that. So let me open it and send that to you. It's the live class number 57. Remember that on that live class, where we did is to create the configuration file so we can launch the move group node properly for our robot. You always have to do this configuration phase for your uh, robot, your ARM robot, okay? If you want to use this kind of programming that we are using here. And um, yeah, so let me close this and then I'm getting to my projects list and check it. Thank you, Matt, for your appreciate for your message and Diego Martin also. Thank you. Uh, there is a link. Uh, Carol is asking. There is link in video description, isn't it? Link for what? Sorry, link for what, Carol? You are talking about. If you mean about the link of the of the uh, ROS yet, then it's not. I'm going to publish right now. If it's link for the live class 57, yes, uh, I think it's here on the description. We put it the previous live class. If not. It is also already included into the notebook. In the notebook, you have a link, direct link, that goes straight into the live class number 57. And here, my system is still opening. Then uh, there is uh, another question here. Then it says, Marcus says, uh, uh, is it possible to deploy collision exclusion gripper ball while grasping, collision system is on. Yes, it is, but you have to feed that with perception. So, uh, so if you want to make your robot to uh, to prevent from colliding to some of the objects around, you have to feed the movie system with uh, some sensory information. And uh, yeah, so we are not covering that here. Then, then let's see. Uh, uh, more, many messages, sorry, I got uh, here lost on this. Um, then let me check, I will recreate in the class, yes. Uh, then mostly see your logo, train your imagination. Okay, then, uh, then quarantine the muscle, he says, hey, I will, I follow the class, I would like to know how to create a URDF with the end effect factor okay for that we have some other specific live classes actually we have created a live class that is about how to create your gazebo arm then there we show how to create an arm a simple arm okay with a gripper also and check that for a previous live class and then you will be able to create your own uh, URDF for your, for your own with your own end effector and uh, then Corinti says, I am working with the UR3 and a robotic gripper. Yeah, then almost done, have it. Because for the UR, the UR3 is already done, the, the, the URDF for the UR3 robot. Uh, Kuldeep says, Ricardo, great day for please send us the link of Russia to the previous live class. Yes. So let me go back to this to, so I can solve this right now. So my system has opened and I'm copying here the link. Okay, so let me put it there. So this is the live class number 57 project. Okay, so there it is. And uh, then let me see. Uh, Jin Juan says, thank you. Thank you, Jin Juan. Thank you to you. And Corentine also, thank you. Go deep. We are waiting for the recording of the class. Yes, I will do it tonight. Okay, so expect. Uh, so I am located now at Montreal, that is in Canada, and so tonight's uh, hour in Montreal time. Then Cool deep. Thank you. Thank you to you, uh, Abdur. Can we get the grass demo pie file? 
the grass demo pi file yeah it is included in the notebook so if you follow the notebook you have the whole code there so just check the notebook and then you have everything in there and also how to in, even create that file Gloria de Felix says, thank you, Ricardo. I'm still working through the steps, but this is a great workshop. Thank you, <laughs> Gloria, for supporting with, the mess with those messages of support. Glad you were able to share to for us, even the spotty internet connection. Cheers. Okay, thank you, Gloria. See you, see you around. It's very likely that I'm going to visit uh, San Francisco in the close time, so maybe we can meet again there. Okay, Gloria? Then Abdul says, I kick off. I'm kicked off already. Sorry, Abdur. I'm going to do my best to solve this for the next live class, for sure. Then Marco says, thanks for the support and lesson. Thank you very much, Marco. Um, okay, Gloria is talking to Steve. You talk there, and then you got the link there. So I think that this is all for today. I'm sorry for that situation, but you know, that's how life goes. I had to sit down on the, on the ground and just let me finish by showing you the people still here working on making the robot work and grasp some things i think that that's a very interesting uh, way of finishing and here you, you can see the robot that is there and it trying to grasp the stuff of the table yeah so that's a very good deal yes and I don't know which states they are. Now, if they are going to try, they are just uh, doing some measurements. I don't know. But that's it. That's the situation at the ICRA at present. And see you on the next live class that is going to be next, next week, okay? About adding perception to the grasping system so we can see where the ball is. Until then, keep pushing your rose lining, guys. <laughs>